chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, God did not send his Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Brother Paul, that is great, great news. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, yes. the, Jesus is basically saying that if you don't believe, you're already condemned already because you don't believe on the only begotten um, Son of God, which is Jesus Christ himself. And I love verse 16 that says, whosoever. You know, I am glad that when they counted me out, uh, when they didn't want to have nothing to do with me, you know, when, the, um, when some people excluded me, you know, I'm glad that I am one of those whosoever. That when I gave my life to the Lord, He accepted me just the way I was, and um, He had a supernatural and great plan for my life. And I want to tell you today that the Lord has a great plan for your life. So just know that God loves you, and I know you probably get tired of hearing that, <laughs> but it is so, so true. He loves you, and not only that, Brother Paul, but one thing I really love about it is that God didn't just say, I love you. The Bible says in the book of Romans that he demonstrated it. You know, it's one thing for me to tell you I love you, but it's yes. another thing, you know, to show that love. So that's a, I think that's great news. And I just want to let somebody know that this watch, you may feel like you're not accepted. You may feel like you're not loved today. You are one of those whosoever. The interview I've been waiting for for years, for a long time, is finally here today. I am with my friend, uh, Brother Paul Downey. God bless you. <laughs> um, Paul and I met back in 2006. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but it was at the First Baptist Church. I remember. In McKinnon. Yes. Along with my dear friends, Brian Mackey and some other people <coughs> that was with me. Uh, many of you guys don't know this, but after graduating high school, um, I had went to a vocational trade school there in McKinnon, Texas to take up a, a few trades. And um, on Wednesday nights, I used to go and attend the First Baptist Church. And we were all just sitting up there in the balcony. And, we, and I think we met Paul and the beautiful wife, Sue, and we just made a connection. Since then, we've kind of lost connection along the way, but I've always um, made a way to stay connected to him. So I'm so honored be here. He's a great friend. And I really value um, his friendship. And uh, today I just want to uh, introduce you to him. He's a great man of God. He's a great friend of mine. He, uh, he's a chaplain for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And we'll be talking about all of that. So Paul, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. And uh, let's start out with this. Tell us just a little bit about yourself. I know you used to be a teacher and a college uh, that's right. It started out. Uh, it started out, Henry. I was uh, a school teacher, uh, public school, for about thir about almost thirty years. And uh, after retirement from that, I thought I was through teaching. Uh, it had been a lot of years in the seventh and eighth grade, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of years. Uh, but the Lord wasn't through with me as far as being a school teacher was concerned. He decided to. Uh, had me go back, get another degree, and teach 12 more years at uh, a community college here mm -hmm. in the area. And uh, I just uh, finished that up maybe three, four years ago now. But since then, uh, the Lord isn't through with me either. <laughs> Still going. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work in the uh, chaplaincy field. That's awesome. Yeah. How did you come to know the Lord? Well, how did that come about? I was in I was in Sunday school in uh, I, I was eight years old in Sunday school at a church uh, not far from here, and uh, I noticed that my mom, my dad, and some of the other children in the class were continually accepting Christ as their Savior and Lord. They were they were uh, entering into believers' baptism. They were becoming a member of the church. And uh, it wasn't that I felt left out. It was like I didn't feel like I was complete. To tell the truth, my mother, I'm sure, was praying over her son, Paul, ever <laughs> since before he was born. 
And those prayers came to fruition when my pastor, Dr. Charles Myers, uh, explained the steps to peace with God through Jesus to me in a simple way that even a child could understand it. And uh, I accepted Christ back there in 1953. <laughs> I'll know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Everybody faces a challenge. Let's face it, we all, you know, every day is not a great day. Uh, we don't always have peaceful days. Yes. But it's really not about how you face a challenge, how we respond to it, how we react to life circumstances. So you personally, when you face challenges in your life, how do you respond to it? Like anybody else, uh, very often I'll, I'll uh, I'm going to say this for the men that are listening. <laughs> I used to always try to do it my way. And if the Lord's way and my way seemed to be the same, I would usually succeed. <laughs> <laughs> but the secret to my uh, continual faith in God is the fact, too, that I married a godly woman. Mm -hmm. And when you're equally yoked, it's almost impossible for the evil one to do anything other than just play with you because he knows mm -hmm. that we are off limits. Mm -hmm. Brother Henry, his wife, Brother Paul, my wife, we pretty well came together and made a union of one. Mm -hmm. I should say a union of one that has been solidified with the third member of that triangle, and that's the Almighty God. What... What, what would you say would be one of the, your most greatest accomplishments in life? I think that the greatest accomplishment that anyone has in life is to be given the responsibility and be given the empowerment to win other people to Christ through the thoughts and the power which the Holy Spirit gives you. It's something that is, and you know this, brother, mm -hmm. it's something that is just, you are there, you're obedient to the Father, and He blesses you and gives you so much more than you could ever believe, because it's all about Him, and it's not about you. You work for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, and Billy Graham is a great man. Yeah. Great man. Uh, how did that come about? When did you become passionate for that? It's really kind of a strange a strange situation because as I look back on my life, and as you can tell, I'm over 70, um, it was like everything that I was given by the Lord to do, He didn't allow it to happen until I was completely ready. Uh, teaching in middle school gave me the gave me the ability to get along with a lot of people that are hard to get along with. Amen. And at the same time, uh, uh, if there was such a thing as burnout and thinking I was through educating, he gave me a chance to to deal with teenagers and young adults in in the, in the community college. And all that time, he was honing me and making me sharp enough to deal with almost any person at any step uh, along the way of life that, that I might have to encounter. And I could get to where I could identify with almost anybody. And, and an important part of winning any person to Christ and giving God the glory is first allowing you to have a relationship with a person. Mm -hmm. And when you can identify with people, they trust you. And when they trust you, the door opens. That's awesome. My last question is, if you had a message you wanted to share with the world, what would it be? <laughs> I, would, I would say simply that we only have one great commission. Mm -hmm. We have one great commandment. And indeed, if we obey that one great commandment, everything in life falls into place. If we honor the Lord thy God and we give him everything that we have, we automatically will do what he says mm -hmm. in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, the Great Commission to make those disciples throughout the world. And, and that's the business that uh, he's put my brother Henry and me about. Mm -hmm. and, and, and everything else, everything else becomes secondary. And, and one thing about it, Henry, that, that, that I continually think about is they give 
my mom gave me the name Paul, mm -hmm. the world's greatest evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> so I was always in that place where more was expected of me, and like so many people, I did run away with it, run away from it in my youth. But pretty soon, I suddenly realized that it's a whole lot easier mm -hmm. to get in that flow of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. go and do just as our Lord wants us to do, and have a complete, full life. Wow, this is a powerful interview. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Would you mind saying a closing prayer for those that are watching right now? Sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we praise your holy name, Father. And, and indeed, uh, uh, as we come before you, uh, we're just in awe, Father, that you can use the likes of Henry and me and so many countless others around the world right now to your glory, to, to, to bring about into fruition all of those lost souls, those people that you created to have a relationship with, Father. And, and as, as my brother here knows and as do I, uh, the time is so very, very short. And there will be a point in the book of Matthew when it does come true that when that last person hears the good news, then the end will come. That's right. Father, we know that it isn't that last soul that is going to be saved that causes that end to come. But when that last person in this world hears the good news, then he will come. And for us here still on planet Earth, as as we're contemplating that, that day that's not too far off in the future, that we have an unbelievable responsibility that we have to carry out, especially, especially with the time frame given that only the Holy Spirit within each one of us as believers can be used to your glory, Father. And indeed, we give you all the glory and power, Father, because it's all about you, it's not about us. So let it be so. Let us be about your business. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. <laughs>